This is AM News. Details now. The Fisheries Minister and Member of Parliament for Ewutu Senya East constituency, Mavis Hawakumsen, has assisted the police to arrest two people suspected to have been involved in the assault of Cape FM journalist David Kobina during the central regional vetting of parliamentary aspirants of the NPP. This was disclosed by the President of the Ghana Journalists Association at a press conference to announce the lifting of media blackout on another MP, Farouk Ali Mahama. Carlos Kaloni has the rest of the story. The Ghana Journalist Association, GJA, has revealed that Minister of Fisheries and MP for Ewutu Senya East constituency, Mavis Hawakumsen, has sent two of the alleged persons who assaulted Cape FM journalist David Kobina to the police to aid investigations. Speaking at a press conference in Accra, the GJA president, Albert Jumfo, pledged his outfit will continue to pursue the case to its logical conclusion. The latest development on this case is that Ms. Awakumsin has honored her way by taking two suspects identified to her during the said meeting to the police to assist the police with investigations. We are very much aware that the police has cautioned them and has taken their statements. We are closing, we are following up on the case with the police to ensure prosecution. I have directed the Central Regional, Central Regional Executive to speak to the complainant, that's the victim, Kobina, to write to the police to seek for what the state of investigation report. We will inform the public when this report gets to us. Meanwhile, GJA says the Yendi MP Farouk Mahama has made peace with the association and its partners, hence his blackout has been revoked. After meeting as a coalition to assess the conciliatory gesture of the MP, the plea by the Minister of Information designate and Air Deputy designate, and the positive feedback from the management of City TV City FM, the GJA and its partners have decided to end the media boycott placed on Honorable Faluk Aliu Mahama, MP for Yindi. We therefore respectfully request all media organizations to take note and act accordingly with effect from today, May 9, 2024. Let me point out that we have the full acceptance of city FM City TV management on this matter. We have their full acceptance and the full cooperation in this regard. The GJE president revealed that the implementation of the media blackout strategy has yielded positive results as attacks on journalists appear to be on the decline. We are glad to say that no attack on journalists has been recorded since we made this observation at our last press conference. Furthermore, there is good news on Ghana's improved press freedom ranking as recently announced. So what we are trying to say is that uh, after recording the first two attacks in January, I think early February, we, there was another one making three. And since we took decision and in our resolve to blacklist, persons and individuals who come after journalists who attack journalists for no provocation, no reason. We have realized a decline in the attack on journalists and media practitioners. And for me, this is really, this is really good for us. It means that the measures and decisions we have taken is really biting and everyone is really um, should I say, uh, cautioned and being careful about the media. The GG remains hopeful that the media fraternity will continue to enjoy safety, especially in the lead up to this year's general elections. Carlos Caloni for Joy News, Accra. MP for Cape Coast North, Dr. Kwame Namintanyako, is asking the rank and file of the NDC to unite to win the 2024 elections. Dr. Kwame Namintanyako says Ghanaians need to be freed.
from the hardships the NPP government has inflicted on us. Addressing a forum by the youth wing of the constituency, Dr. Mentanyako appealed to the party members who are just turned 18 to register to give the NDC a major boost in the December polls. There's more in this report. Addressing party supporters in the Cape Coast North constituency, the MP Dr. Kwame Nemi Tanyako called on his constituents to support him in order to retain the seat. The MP discounted claims of his opponent that he was the one that ensured the road construction in the constituency. Uh, Let's work together to retain the NDC. When John Mahama becomes the president and you don't have an MP from the same party of the president, you can't go to him for anything. But if you vote for me, you can have an unimpeded access to the president. Recently, I heard some narratives in town concerning the road network and the construction here in this constituency. I heard that the MPP parliamentary candidate claiming he was the one that ensured the award of the road contract. I tell you on authority that he is a big liar. I'm the one that has ensured the construction of this road. I have the document to prove that. I'm challenging anybody who claims he was the one to also produce the relevant documents. Our youth should be aware that John Mahama is bringing the 24-hour economy and that will lead to the provision of many jobs. From 9 to 5 p.m. Up and 9 where we are. Up and 9 where we are. So I will go to the I will go to the gym. Eight hours. The NDC parliamentary candidate for the Ayewaso West Wogon, John Dumelo, underscored the need for peace and unity in the party in order to retain the party to power. Now, if you 2024 here, yeah, John Mahama so Obesan so be the president. Now, if you 7 December 2024, I'm also mayor parliament. And so, as some call, I'm a panamaker. In 2024, John Mahama will be president. I will also go to parliament. There is no need to be disunited. In the 2024 battle, it is the NPP that's our enemy and not the NDC. Let's come together to undertake door-to-door -door campaigns, room-to-room -room campaign, pillow-to-pillow -pillow campaign, and other campaign strategies that will make us retain the Cape Coast North seat and to win the presidency. Cape Coast North Chairman of the NDC and Co-Chair of the Youth Wing, Richard Apo, asked persons who have turned 18 to register in order to vote. This is just the beginning. What lies ahead is bigger. The EC is undertaking limited registration. It is the registration of the youth. Tell everyone who has just turned 18 to go and register. We are going into the elections with two people, Dr. Kwame Nami and John Mahama, who is bringing the 24-hour economy. The youth wing in the Cape Coast North constituency says it will never rest until their candidate, Dr. Kwame Nami Tanyaku, is retained as their MP. In other stories, Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Balmir has indicated that the elimination of ghost names or the National Service Scheme and SNET payrolls has saved the country more than 500 million Ghana cities as the fingerprint verification systems were introduced by the government in the two institutions. The Vice President, who was speaking at the 14th Annual General Meeting of Heads of Anti-Corruption Agencies in Accra, indicated that revenue leakages at the ports, passport and driver's license offices, have been blocked after introducing paperless systems at these institutions. Perhaps one of the most significant results of our digitalization agenda 
has been through the integration of the public sector databases using the Ghana card as a unique identifier through biometric audits, we have been able to see the removal of 29,000 ghost pensioners from our national pension scheme, the SNIT, and it is saving us 480 million Ghana CDs annually, and a further 44,707 ghost workers were eliminated from our national service scheme payroll between 2022 and 2024, saving us a further 356 million Ghana CDs. Health, health authorities in the Bono East region are calling on the general public to take advantage of the African Vaccination Week to receive their COVID-19 jabs. Regional Director of Health Services, Dr. Fred Adomakubwating, says the move would help provide head immunity against COVID with other 40% of the region's targeted population yet to receive the full dose of the vaccines. Anasabit has more. As part of the African Vaccination Week, the Bono East Regional Health Directorate is urging the general public to take advantage of the celebrations to get their COVID-19 chaps, which are available at the various health facilities across the region. Regional Director of Health Services Dr. Fred Adamako Boatin says the Ghana Health Service is working towards routinizing COVID-19 vaccines across the country and all persons are eligible with the exception of pregnant women and children under 18. If you look at Bunu for 2023, we, we recorded 18 positive cases of COVID. And then the 2024, we have recorded two positive cases. And these are the cases that did not come to the hospital. As of, you remember the epidemic where people, the pandemic people would come with signs and symptoms and you, you thought they were having COVID. These cases were picked from what we call our surveillance units. So we have facilities across Bunuis and even across the country where we've mounted surveillance continuously. We are monitoring the, the, the cases of COVID in the population. Uh, uh, we pick these cases from, from these surveillance, uh, sentinel surveillance sites. And I want to use this opportunity to let the general public also be aware that we are now going to routinize COVID vaccines. Uh, uh, we are going to stop this campaign. We are not going to stop drastically, but now anybody who qualifies for the vaccine can walk into a facility and have it as all the other vaccines that we, we, we have seen. He says the time has come for all to embrace the vaccines and do away with the myths and misconceptions associated with the vaccines and ask that vaccines save lives. The obvious questions then will come and we know the myth around these vaccines which we have discussed. Uh, I quite remember even at Tebubu and in Bunis where the, the women, one of the classical ones that they were saying is the moment you have the vaccines, you'll be what, infertile for 10 years. The men will be impotent for 10 years. You'll become bald. Uh, I'm, I was already bald, actually. But uh, these are uh, things that for all of us in this room, Ourselves, our family members had the vaccines. Our dear ones also had the vaccines. We, we saw that these were what uh, really uh, uh, myths that people were having. And so we would advise people having the opportunity to take advantage and, and, and because vaccines really save lives. Dr. Fred Admarko Boatin said the directorate has instituted a surveillance system to enable it to identify new cases as and when they get into the region, but was quick to urge all to get their vaccines. We know that the, the, the pandemic or the epidemic prone nature of COVID, once somebody gets it, the cascade nature in the, in the spread. So we, the Sentinel is able to capture them wherever they are coming from. Though we are trunk with the middle, highly populated, with the influx of all people internationally, locally. So we will say that, look, we will continue. But we are not going to wait. The most obvious and the easiest that you can do is protect people. And that is the vaccination that all of us. With the difficulty in knowing all these, your best bet is what? Get the vaccines and be protected.
The Burundi's region has about 52% of the region's targeted population receiving full doses of the vaccines and about 65% receiving one dose of the vaccine. Anna Sabit, Joy News, Kintampo. Away from that, the Ghana National Association of Authors and Publishers has announced a price hike in books, including fictional and non-fictional textbooks for preschool, primary, junior high school, and senior high schools. Effective September 2024, prices of most textbooks will go up by at least 60%. The association attributes the adjustment to escalating port charges, including the COVID-19 levy and AU levy, and the high-value added taxes on imported books. High inflation, increasing fuel prices, rising exchange rate and high import duties are factors considered in increasing the prices of books. According to the Ghana Association of Authors and Publishers, it cannot sit on concern for the book industry, which contributes significantly to economic growth to collapse. At a press conference in Kumase, President of the Association, John Akwesi Amponsa, highlighted the challenges in the book industry, mainly due to high taxes. In recent at the same time, macroeconomic indicators such as higher inflation, high interest rate, high exchange rate have called on us to take serious actions to remediate our industry from collapsing. Government, directly or indirectly, in this bid to avoid higher importation of books, has come up with several elements within the documents we have. This is a trade document. If you go to the port today to clear one forty feeter container, something that is already stated to us that no port duties because of Florence Agreement, you end up paying about two hundred and ninety thousand Ghana cities to clear books for kindergarten, to clear books for crash to clear books for primary schools. Mr. Frimpon says the industry players are not enthused with the hikes in the prices of books. From September 2024, primary school textbooks selling between 50 and 60 Ghana cities will see a significant increase to 80 Ghana cities, while books for junior high and senior high schools currently sold at 50 to 80 Ghana cities will increase to 80 and 180 Ghana cities. The publishers are urging the government to redraw taxes imposed on imported books. From September, credit for bulk purchases in exceptional cases shall not extend beyond 40 days from the time of purchase and delivery at a discount of 10%. Again, we also want to make a passionate appeal to government that this is phase one of our reaction to prices, phase one, phase two. It's just at the corner. We are pleading with the government. We know he has the strongest arm, but we are pleading with him to do something about the VAT that he has recently introduced on books. For Joy News, Nana Bwachidankwe Yadom Kumas. Now let's go to WA, where the Municipal Chief Executive for WA, Isaku Tahiru Mumin, has stated that the construction of an irrigation at Perihi will improve the living standards of the people in the area. The 19 million Ghana cities irrigation project, which is funded by the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority and the government of Ghana upon completion, will employ 5,000 people in the enclave. Unlike other irrigation projects that have been initiated in the past and which have failed, he assured the people that the latest irrigation project won't fail. Join News Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam reports from Perili. Unlike their counterparts from the southern Gulf of the country, where they have two rainy seasons and are able to do all year round farming, the situation in the northern belt is quite different. They depend on one rainy season would last about five months and a drought that lasts for about seven months. More than 60% of the people in the enclave are farmers and sometimes are unable to have a successful farming season as a result of the erratic rainfall pattern. Government in this bit to address the concerns of farmers in the area included the construction of irrigation dams 
on the second phase of the Planting for Food and Jobs program. One of the beneficial communities in the Upper West region is Perihi, located in the Wa municipality. Wa municipal chief executive Isako Tuare Moumen explains the motive behind the siting of the project at Perihi. And then we have realized that uh, augmenting the phase two with availability of water in the various communities is key for the success of uh, the planting for food and jobs phase two. And I think that is why today uh, we represented the government uh, of His Excellency Nana Adudanko Akufuado and Dr. Alaji Mahmoud Baumia to come here this afternoon to hand over site for the construction of an irrigation dam. It is an 18-month project and awarded to Mokulam Ghana Limited. Yes, the, the contract sum is a 19 million Ghana cities. It's a big project. It's a very big project. A dam that can hold about 1 million cubic of water at a very small place. And aside that, the dump is there. We also have an irrigable area. So where there will be a vast land, you know, uh, to be distributed among members of the community, those who will be interested to work, those who will be interested to involve in a, a dry season gardening and farming. So there is a lot. So here we are looking at uh, an average, uh, you know, depending on the areas that are going, those who are going to go into the, uh, the dry season farming, we are looking at not less than 500 people, especially in the gardening. But the other areas, the numbers, especially those who have registered, we can count about 1,000 plus. The site was handed over to the managing director of the company, Samsadin Shafik, at a beautiful ceremony at Perihi. Unlike other irrigation projects that have failed in the past, Isako Tire Moomin assured the people that this project won't fail. We, we have reviewed the previous uh, strategy and we have realized that now um, we have to have uh, what we call an all-embracing program. And this program includes sensitization. And if you remember, media were invited one time to go uh, at the municipal assembly where we launched the uh, planting for food and jobs phase two. And we made it clear to the people that this time round we are not going to launch the program and go and sit down. Sensitization is another a key issue that we have to consider. So we are sensitizing the people and letting them understand what the goods uh, and the benefits of this program is and how potentials are, are abound within the, this particular program so that they should get up and embrace it. Our power regional manager of the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority, Jida Suleiman Otinowusu, urged the people to take advantage when the dam is completed to better their lives. Alhamdulillah or inshallah when the facility is constructed I will urge every one of you to put it to good use for the benefit of all of us. It will be an opportunity for us due to our proximity to our market. So please let us all take advantage of this and improve upon our life. Reporting for the news. Rafik Salam, query. Now, the highest and most revered seat of Asante, the Golden Stool, otherwise known as Sike Jakufi, is expected to be outdoored at the Grand Deba to climax the Silver Jubilee of the Asante Henio Tumfo Saiti II. The stool, believed to have been conjured from the heavens by the revered Asante priest Okonfa Noche, will be part of the four traditional processions, uh, processes of the Asante Hene on Sunday. The committee spearheading activities of the anniversary has also instituted measures, including a ban on tricycles and closure of some routes within the precinct of the Mesha Palace for safety and security of the thousands of people gracing the occasion. Joabin Hene Nana Otsu Osorebo II is the chairman of the Otunfo 25th Anniversary Committee. So preparations are hurriedly shaping up here at the Mishia Palace for the Grand Deba of Otunfo Osei to the second um, Silver Jubilee anniversary. That will be happening here at the Mishia Palace. And as you can see behind me, those are some of the stages that will be mounted um, during this particular um, um, Grand Deba. On Sunday, 
a lot of people are expected to be here. We're talking about the president of Ghana, some foreign dignitaries. We understand that the Tobago or Trinidad um, prime minister will be here, a representative from the um, Ivory Coast and also the foreign minister of Morocco. All are expected um, to be here for the grand debat, the climax of everything regarding Otun Force um, Silver Jubilee. There have been a raft of measures that have been put in place by the committee spearheading this particular celebration. Take a listen to Jabin Hine, Nana Otu Osirebo II. Na answer Jabin Babano. Sabi, I will prepare a dear honey bio. The memenda I obey a red apano. As we see, now prepare a commander of the so. On Saturday, there will be a general cleanup exercise at various paramounties in the region. We'll be closing some major routes within the environment of the palace. We'd implore the tricycle riders not to come within the presence of the palace. So for those of you who have never cited the Sike Jakofi, that's the golden stool um, of the Asantis, it will be unveiled on Sunday. It is expected to be here as part of the full regalia of Asante Hene, climaxing his 25th anniversary. For the Baba, a free a a a come man or a Baba, a as a could the Asantehine will be coming with his full procession, including the golden stool Sike Jakofi. This is to showcase the rich culture and tradition of the Ashantis. So on Sunday, hundreds and even thousands of people are expected to troop in here at the Minshia Palace for the climax. We are talking about some government officials and even foreign dignitaries will be gracing this particular occasion. And we understand security measures have been put in place to ensure the successful climax of the 25th anniversary of the 2432 the 2nd. Reporting for Joy News, my name is Emmanuel Bright Creek. Well, that will be all for the AM News. Up next is the news review. Please, don't go away.